about 10 inches square, I'd say. And it, again, it uh, recognizes the, the history of the building. Okay. Um, the plaques we're looking for, for, we're thinking about for all of our public art, excuse me, and there's about 20 pieces in our town, by the way, um, is uh, something museum size, you know, five inches by three inches, something like that. That would be metal. It's going to go in the alleyway, actually. Um, I don't think it Or just mounted somewhere yeah. at the entrance to yeah. the. To yeah, the I, would, I would love it right on either, the Main Street side of things. Either on the frame, because yeah. that building has a bay window that wraps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure that the width of the frame, but it, it may be possible to put it on a frame, which would, you would see it when you're walking down the sidewalk. Yeah. Or just at the edge of the brick. Yeah. We can, I'd, I'd be perfectly happy to put that in this. Well, this, that's what I was thinking. That's what I figured you might be. What, what size maximum? What, like yeah. 10 by 10? 10 by 12? 10, yeah. 10 by 10. I, I was thinking about the size. If you think about a size of piece of paper. Mm -hmm. yeah. that's, 8 by 11. That's 8 by 11. Yeah. It's got to be more than one letter because otherwise you can it for 300 feet away. <laughs> I watched way too much TV the last two days. <laughs> I realized yesterday that you could watch 14 hours of real-time political TV if you watch the hearings and then the Democratic debate, which I did a lot as part of. And are you okay? <laughs> no. <clears throat> it might be more exciting than watching design review, but it might not be as important. That's the problem. Bob, where are you getting your funding from? Um, we have three sources that we're looking at. We get a little bit from the town, hopefully on a yearly basis, but, but that kind of depends uh, each year. It's not guaranteed. Um, we're also looking for public-private partnerships, and we're going to begin to seriously begin to talk to local business people in the next year. And then finally, fundraising. Thank you. Thank you. I will. Kids. Better. Thank you. So what I said was it just a bronze color or dark color metal plaque up to a 10 by 12 was go 10 by 12 size may be installed at the entry to the alley, which describes the art project. Any mountings on a brick face will be located in the mortar joints of the brick. And you'll you'll get a copy of this. And again, it gives you enough leeway. I mean, you can make it smaller, certainly smaller than that, but you want to have it big enough so you can actually read <laughs> the <laughs> script that you're going to put in the, in the plaque. Any other comments, questions, suggestions from anyone? Oh, the other thing I just up top, I said the wire color of the light strings would be a dark color, green or brown. Great. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments, suggestions? We'll go through the set of criteria. Elevate evaluation criteria, preservation or reconstruction of the appropriate historic style if the proposed projects in the historic district or involves an historic structure, the application is acceptable. Harmony of exterior design with other properties in the district, acceptable. Compatibility of proposed exterior materials, acceptable. Compatibility of proposed landscaping, none proposed in this application. Prevention of the use of incompatible designs, buildings, color schemes, or exterior materials, acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities, acceptable. Recognition of and respect for view quarters and significant vistas, including gateway views of the city and state house, acceptable. All in favor of the application as proposed, raise your hand. It is approved. Thank you and very this much. This is an administrative. Yep. Thanks for coming in.
appreciate your consideration. Yeah. And before you go, I can, need to get you to sign this sure. on the lower left just above my name. Mm -hmm. um, Audra may have your permit tomorrow. You can ah. give the office a call. Fair enough. Thank you very much. Okay, good. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. I hope you get good enough weather to make it easy for the install. Thank you very much. <laughs> we'll grab those few days you get. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again. Okay, thank you. Good night. Thank you. Come on up, Fred. Next good. application, good 100 night. State Street, Capitol Plaza. How are you all tonight? Less icy than we would have been Monday night. Yeah, it's going to be after tonight. It's going to get real cold and icy again. Oh, really? Yeah. Tomorrow is supposed to be icky. Oh, great. So <laughs> describe your gates. They're, they're entry and exit gates. Uh, we're putting them at the Taylor Street entrance and just inside the um, State Street entrance at the ends of the building so that the drive through can get in and out. Uh, be 24 hour parking, paying. We've been shuttling all for a whole year, worse than ever, uh, three, four times a week, and we have no parking. Uh, we can't control it, so this is going to have to help us control the, the yeah, parking. People can still come in the other way, right? They can come any way they want, but they're going to have to pay when they come in. Uh, the first, I think there's eight spots, or seven spots on the bank side, and seven, six on the other will be 13. The bank won't. that will be open for the bank yeah. once they go through the gates. Uh, they'll have to get a ticket just like you do any other parking area. But you we know cash. What if they just come off um, State Street? That's fine. If they go through the gate, they're going to get a ticket. But we're giving 15 minutes free. Anybody going in will have a 15 minute uh, grace period. Okay. Uh, the bank is going to have a 15 minute, anyways, and, or they can go to their drive up, or they can go in their side and not pay at all. Their side will be open all the time. They can do whatever they want with it. Our side is going to be monitored. We have people staying there overnight. Snowstorms, we can't plow. And what about the church? Church has a um, pass through. We're going to have special cards for them. They will. They. I'm not sure if they've got 12. Their their plot plan shows 12. But when they tell me what they actually have, they'll have the gates will be set up so that 12 people can enter and park. The 13th will lock them out. You're going to put some kind of a barrier. I don't understand. If they're dropping gates. Yeah. They're toll gates. You know, right. Yeah. Like and if you go up behind the, uh, Court Street on the way back toward the State House, there's a big yeah, gate there. I, I, I understand similar. the gates, but I don't under. I, I just you got them on one entrance to what's a big free for all parking lot. It's on both. It's on both entrances. Both entrances. Oh, State okay. Street. There's two. Taylor Street and the other end. Yeah. Open the whole. Did it? Oh. Yeah. It should open it up. What I don't understand is Some how. Both. The bank people can access the bank That's area. That's the fifteen minute free. So they have pass. to get a ticket. People who mm -hmm. are using the Northfield Bank have to get a Everybody ticket. Everybody entering the gates will get a ticket. Okay. But if they're using the bank, they won't. And the bank, they're, they're, we're we're thinking of doing things even with the city for about a month, giving them a parking so much that people get used to. I, I missed the gates off. If you see right, yeah. Eric, where, right where it says not, drive through, I, right here, right here. Yeah. I see them. That's, but my concern is, how are people going to get through to use the drive-through? They'll they'll get a free ticket, and they and they'll go through here and they go around here, or they're coming in this way. It's what they have to do now. They can't come in the the gates here. They have to come in now, go all the way around, and come in this way, mm -hmm. or they come in Taylor Street and come in this way. Yeah, I understand for, for that. First fifteen minutes that. are free. Okay. When you go back out, you put your ticket. If you're parking in, out here, the first fifteen minutes will be but free. The, I understand that. I understand that. So that. People who are using the drive through then are going to have to go through the ticket thing. Correct. Okay. So you get a ticket in. going through and then you pay going out. Right. No cash. Credit card. We'll have pay, they call them POF, pay on foot, units in the hotel. Mm -hmm. uh, one by the back entrance inside and one by the ballroom entrance. And we'll also have a validation thing at the front desk. Somebody doesn't have ca uh, credit cards yeah. or it doesn't work, they can pay that way. So, so if the public wants to park there like they do now. Yeah, they're going to pay. They're paying now. If Where do you pay then? Where do you pay? If, if There's a box for the city. Okay. They, our, the city has so many that they can park in. 
And so people go up and they put their money or credit card in a little box yeah. and they put a ticket on their dashboard. And, and then when they have to pay in advance. And they put that on their dashboard and they'll say, right. till yeah. 2 o'clock, and the police come by at 2.10 and they give them a ticket. And then you can use that ticket to get out. You, know, you take a ticket, they'll yeah. tell you what's your time, and you insert it when you leave, and it'll tell you how much you owe. It's just like you're going in a parking garage in Burlington. Yeah. Actually, here the, the new garage will be with the same type of system. Mm -hmm. It'll tell you if it's full, if it's closed for the yeah. afternoon, if we have a big function, we'll close it off. Otherwise, it'll be open for public parking, just like always. Was it hotel guests park there free? Yeah. Or there may be a charge. I'm, we haven't settled on anything yet. Our tenants will have uh, the same type of card as the um, church. They will be able to access it and just, we're doing it so they can either do it with a phone, mm -hmm. uh, RFD, or tap it with a card mm -hmm. and go with it that way. What's the rate? I don't know. Don't know yet. Okay. It won't be a dollar an hour like the city. <laughs> I'm, we're subsidizing that. Nobody's subsidizing me. <laughs> yep. But it won't be that bad. But it may be progressive. Here there over seven hours or something like that, it may start going up. That's what they're doing in a lot of the places now. It's to stop this overnight parking. We I mean, notice parking costs half in Barry, but it doesn't want to tell yeah. There's no business in Barry either, so come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> keep thinking um, I am part of the Onion River Chorus and we um, practice at the church right there and everybody comes in through that back door and parks in that back area so now they're going to be paying for parking at well the, the church no the church will give you so many tickets to come in with they'll, they'll might have 50 or 100 tickets we don't care how many they have but after 12 people right now there's no place to park uh, right so but, yeah because if the rest of yeah, there's not a whole bunch of other yeah if you've used your 12 there. spots up or 13 spots up the 14 spurt if he wants to park in a lot they'll have to pay when they leave mm -hmm. but if the 13th person leaves and the next person coming in he can take that spot he'll be allowed in it just locks him in and out this seems to be more than a design review thing it oh, it, oh yeah though no, it's going through more than just design review but it also has to go through design review because it's in design review and we're adding yeah, the structure yeah. we're adding the gates yeah. oh yeah don't worry it's it's not it's not oh, a I, I just I, yeah I, it's, oh it's parking issues seem beyond well, our well and that's view. I mean, the, the design yep yeah. Nope, that's your, and that's, you don't need to worry about that. Really, all you need to worry about is the gates and the design aspects of the gates. Um, parking you know, issue, we've already, parking issue, we've got the problem. Yeah. And it's on private the, land. We the, just can't control it. So we're trying to control it now. You go down there tonight, you can't find a spot. We have a big function tonight. Yeah, the, the you know, rejiggering of how the traffic flow goes and all of that has already been dealt with through Department of Public Works in our office. The gates will open automatically for a siren. Police, fire, ambulance just have to bring their siren in and it'll open up automatically for them. And these will remain in place? This is, we're hoping that up until the time the garage gets started, then you won't need them. Okay. Then, <laughs> then you're going to have to put your money in the garage. These but fairly permanent locations do you plan a long time before the garage gets built? Well, their city lawyer told us uh, two weeks ago that don't look for anything until 2023. And don't think you're going to start before 2024. I can tell you if it's that long, you won't, probably won't see me waiting. I can't keep dumping money into something because two people want to hold it up. You know. Maybe you should paint his window so he can't see out the window. <laughs> the sad thing about it is the basis is the trucks can't turn around down it below, and they don't anyway. They can't now. They never did. Never did. They do have a new design for the uh, garage, by the way. And it's much, much smaller, much narrower, uh, pushed more onto our property. I think they're down just a lost about 10 spots from what I just saw. Uh, yes, and it's a preliminary. Well, in terms of the design of the gates, I don't have any problem with the design of the gates. No. Yeah, they're, um, 
their gates. Their gates. Yeah. Although they will be the first, well, I was going to say they'll be the first gates in Montpelier, but that's not true. With well, the, 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 the state house. There used to be gates on that property mm -hmm. in 1980 when Anders and Kim Murray bought it. They had them on both ends, and twice the same woman drove through them and broke them. And the guys refused to put them back up again. They even had a, a, a box at the front entrance where they were collecting money with people going through. And that didn't last long either. Are they lit at night, or just the reflective, so the headlights? They'll be ref yeah, the box will be lit up so you can read and everything else. No, I mean the gate itself. So you're no, they're not a light gate. They're just reflective. Just reflective. Yeah. I may put a small light at the, uh, on the exit uh, with a camera so that I can monitor. You know, we, people drive everything, you know, so. No, you're right. That, I've got to protect, unfortunately. I need to. Questions, comments, suggestions? I'm, I'm fine with There's that. no landscaping because I'm. we're just going to block it for now. But yes. All right. Landscape will come with the garage in the hotel. Nobody has anything to add at this point. We can go through the criteria. The evaluation criteria, number one, preservation or reconstruction of the appropriate historic style if the proposed projects in the historic district involves an historic structure, acceptable, harmony of exterior design with other properties in the district, acceptable, Compatibility of proposed exterior materials, <coughs> acceptable. Compatibility of proposed landscaping, none proposed in this application. Prevention of the use of incompatible designs, buildings, color schemes, or exterior materials, acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities, acceptable. Recognition of and respect for view quarters and significant vistas, including gateway views of the city and state house, acceptable. All in favor of the application as proposed, raise your hand. Eric, I saw the um, historic sites did a dig in three or four spots on our property for getting ready. And then they sent uh, back a historic description that they've gotten from Times Argus, wherever they got it from, starting back from the 1700s. It was like 30 pages, and I read it the other day. Those guys are really good at what they I mean, really amazing. And when it got to around the 1900s, my father-in-law used to tell me about some of these people and I remember their names. Even J. Leo Johnson owned a prop couple of properties there. Well, the last two sentences said they unearthed a 1911 Vermont license plate. <sighs> so I wrote to him. I said, is there any possibility you can get that plate for our hotel? And I'll send it to you. Oh, wow. they, they tried looking it up, but the records don't go back that far to see who the registration was. Oh, that's all right. That's, that's really great. Neat. You remember J. Leo Johnson? You remember him, don't you? The Chrysler Garage? Oh, yeah. It was a Chrysler Garage in the back along the river. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there used to be a, it was a capital garage there for a while. Well, but that was over in the corner, and yeah. that was Malone's first garage, the father's first garage. And then this boy, Malone, took over, and then he opened up Woodbury Auto. Mm -hmm. But J. Leo Johnson had a Chrysler Garage at the back of the building on that side of the tracks. And our family bought the Chrysler Garage in the late 70s. And that's when they moved it up to Barry Montpelier Road and opened the Midtown. <laughs> the, uh, and they used to have a dry cleaning plant right next to it. And I forget who the guy, Adams, and then how, how dry cleaners bought it next. Remember, they owned the one up across from our laundromat on Main Street, how cleaners, before he sold it. But what they, everybody did, they took their filters and their tripe and they put them outside on the ground. And that's why you have so many... Well, I've got 11 wells on my ground. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm amazed at the number of garages that used to be downtown where uh, the, the place where Necky is, the, right on the river, that was a garage. That was a garage and, uh, where the laundromat is on Berry Street. Yeah, that was a Chevrolet garage. Yeah. Do you, do you, know, where the, do you know where the showroom was? The showroom for the garage? Uh, there, and that building where the tattoo parlor is. Yeah. In my laundromat, they, the, those windows were the overhead garage doors, and there were three in the back. Oh, wow. And then they would drive the car in, and in the front of the building where my change machine was, there was a huge steel door that would slide, out of, like a barn door, mm. and they would drive the car into the front window of the tattoo parlor. <laughs> that was a showroom. Oh, wow. And that was Downey Chevrolet. 
<laughs> and then they bought the other one in Barry, and they combined it on the Barry of Montpelier Road. The uh, up, up in uh, uh, Morrisville, there was a garage there. A guy about 90 ran it, and he had one car on the floor. And you'd drive that car, and then you'd order whatever you wanted, I guess. But it still had Model A and Model T tool boards up. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, now the Keen family owns it. What? Now the Keen family owns it. Yeah. Dan was from Montpelier. Done? Thank you. You're Thanks, all set. Sir. Good. So I think... I think I don't know if Audra got the additional information. I, I sent her a whole bunch to you. There's really stuff. no okay. flood proofing to do these things because they're six inches above, and then all the controls are six inches, and it's bolted. Okay. Well, and it's, it's nothing but a steel cabinet. It's yeah, they're you know, GFI so protected, and then put in the building. Okay. So. so yeah, you'll need to. My thing is trying to figure out a way to get Cat Six wire out there from our building. Yeah. So we'll just have to tunnel underneath the sidewalks. It's okay, right? <laughs> Talk to Audra. Thank you. See you later. Thank you, Fred. Go home Thank early. You, Fred. Go home early. <laughs> <laughs> Take you might, care. You might get some more of the debate still on the TV. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Just right. lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right, and the minutes. Work. We can't do the 21st, but there are three of us here for the four. Yes. So does anybody have any questions, comments, or changes to the no. November yes. the Yes. Okay. If, you, if you take a look at the adjournment thing, it says Eric made a motion to approve. Whoops. I think that means adjourned. Yeah. To adjourn. Thank you. Yeah. It's my favorite motion. <laughs> to approve or to adjourn? <laughs> I noticed With? in the congressional hearings that the chairman just did, he closes it. Closes it. And I think you ought to have that authority. <laughs> I don't have a hammer. <laughs> You could also one. time us. <laughs> yes. You could time us when we have comments. With, with that change, do I hear a motion to approve so those minutes? Second. Second it. All in favor of the November the 4th minutes, raise your hand. Those are approved. Awesome. And uh, giving us an update on the. Yeah, a, a little one. Rigs. So. Uh, the Planning Commission made some final adjustments. Um, I don't have the revised draft, but um, the, the Historic Preservation Commission and Planning Commission went back and forth a bit on changes to the design, um, the definition for historic building, and pretty much stuck with the current definition of historic building. Um, there were some expansions on the overlay district, um, including so some tweaks that were just bringing in, you know, a couple of, of parcels to make sure that all of a neighborhood was part of the district, part of the neighborhood was part of it, bringing in the rest of it. Um, I think probably one of the biggest changes was actually adding in all of your neighborhood up behind the state house. That was very confusing to um, me. And getting added into had that. We ended up with that all added into the district, I, right? Yeah, I should I should have gone around the boundaries on there because they're sort of nothing. They don't match the National Register boundaries or anything else. Yeah. And I didn't look at it, uh, I guess, the, carefully well, the, enough. The, the, the neighborhood boundaries were designed to try and... Um, make sure neighborhoods were consistent, not just historically, but also when you came to, okay, this is a residential neighborhood. 80% of the houses in this neighborhood have similar setbacks or similar lot sizes um, and a similar char overall characteristics. So the, the neighborhoods for zoning purposes aren't necessarily gonna match with the historic districts. Um, but I think that having that as a basis for saying this is why this is all being pulled into design overlay, whether it's for historic purposes or not. I thought the Historic Maybe Preservation so. Commission and the Planning Commission were going to sit down and do this together, mm. but that didn't happen. So I'm still a bit annoyed about that because uh, I think we picked up most of the changes, but I was the only one that showed up to me. Yeah. Right? 
Yeah, it was. I think, you know, I think it's gonna be better. That doesn't mean that there can't be more work uh, to I, tweak things and make make things better later. I think we ought to look at those boundaries. I just haven't had the yeah. energy. I can. We can we can do more of that in historic preservation for sure. Yeah. And try and you know pull design review committee members in as well as anybody wants okay, to so come the, to it. Boundaries look like a southern gerrymander, <laughs> <laughs> and they're just they go zigzag all over. They're all over. I mean, it's not you know. But, so there, the plan is that the new design review regulations will have their first public hearing um, in front of planning commission in January. So they've got to have two pu two public hearings, I think, for planning commission, and then hopefully move forward to city council. Hopefully there won't be a lot of public pushback and have them decide to rework it, but we'll see what happens. Uh, you never know. It's not like anybody showed up at the planning commission discussions no, that we just time. had. No, nobody. Either time. No, no outside voices. So. I was reading the article in the newspaper about the, you know, they have a proposal before for the uh, uh, old armory mm. rec department and I, th I think that's an historic building I think it would be helpful if the Preservation Commission were involved in that. Who should I talk to about that Mike? Maybe it hasn't I mean it hasn't really come through our <coughs> door at all yet. I yeah. don't know how much, much Mike knows about it. I mean, mostly but, it, you can't, and, and they, they they missed it. I don't know, was it a newspaper or uh, Red Loaf missed uh, there's a major settlement problem at the rear of the building that they didn't talk about fixing. Hmm. As you can see, there's two big cracks that just, but I mean, I, I, I looked at it 15 years ago. I don't think it's moved a lot, hmm. but it's, uh, it should be addressed structurally. Oh yeah, but I, I don't know where they are or aren't. Uh, what's interesting is a shooting range mm -hmm. in that building. Well, it was an armory, so yeah. You in that. the basement, they had a uh, a shooting range in the basement. My my high school had a shooting range and a bowling alley. Your high school did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Big high school, uh, 5,500 people. In oh my it. God! Wow, where were, where? Evanston, Illinois, just north of Chicago. Slightly I different the, world. Huh? Yeah, somebody had to set pins. Mm -hmm. and they just had a mechanical pin setter. I would prefer to do, I prefer to do that than bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of, <laughs> <laughs> was that a motion to adjourn? It is. Yes. <laughs> Do I hear a second? I second it. All in favor of adjournment, raise your hand. Meeting is adjourned. <laughs>